Hello, it's Mr. Dotson with Weight Construction. I'm making this video because we can't be in the classroom for my students. We're going to refresh this bathroom up. We're not going to completely remodel because I'm going to leave the tub and the tile floor. But I am going to change the bathroom vanity sink here, the medicine cabinet, the towel bars, shower rod, even going to change the vent and the floor there. I'm going to do all new brushed nickel pieces. I've already painted the ceiling and put a little test patch of paint on the wall here. We're going to also change the plugs and switches. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the towel bars, the shower head and faucet I'm going to redo, but we're going to remove everything that we're going to replace with new first. And I'm going to go through and fix the drywall and paint everything. And then after I paint, I will start to put everything back together. This will be the first two things I'm going to remove. I have to disconnect the light unscrew the medicine cabinet from the wall and then I will have to disconnect the plumbing underneath the sink here and cut the caulking around the sink off the wall and then unscrew the vanity then I'm going to move forward with painting and then start to reinstall all of the new stuff Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to remove the medicine cabinet and the vanity. First thing we have to do is shut the light off. I'm going to remove the wires so I can take this medicine cabinet down. Since I turned the switch off, there's no power up here. So I don't have to worry about getting electrocuted right this second. So I'm gonna put the caps back on the wires that are going into the wall. Just in case I turn the switch on accident or anything. ground wire now okay so now there's no electric on the medicine cabinet hooked up anymore so we'll have to open this and we'll see some screws in here that I'll have to remove with a drill and just take them all out. Sometimes there's some underneath it or up top you need to get to. Just depends on how it was installed. There's a lot of screws in this because a lot of times people fill up these medicine cabinets with all kinds of stuff. Shelf's in my way. So it's most of the way loose now. I have one screw that I couldn't get all the way loose. Okay, so now I'm going to disconnect all of the plumbing, which is really fairly easy to do to remove the vanity. Underneath the sink here, there's a shutoff valve. I'm going to turn them both off. It's hot and cold water, completely off, nice and tight. Take a crescent wrench and remove the water line. I do have a towel down underneath here because some water is going to drip out that's in the line. And also when we disconnect the drain, there will be a little water in what's called the trap. So 
so the water lines are removed now this is what's called the plumbing trap this right here it always has water in it the water drains from the sink and comes down and then it goes back out through here so there's always water inside here it stops fumes from coming up through the sewage lines so these are real easy you just turn them by hand and loosen them up i have some water spilling but i do have the towel underneath there and i'm going to dump this in the sink so now i am going to take a drill and unscrew the couple of screws that are underneath here take a razor knife cut the caulking so it doesn't rip my wall up and then this should be loose and ready to come out so that is removed i will haul it out here in a minute the next thing i want to show you real quick is this towel bar this is for the hand towel there's a few other ones most of these things always have like a small set screw underneath i'm using a real small eyeglass screwdriver for this one sometimes they're allen wrenches um, sometimes they're a small straight screw like this one you loosen it up from underneath you gotta get it all the way because it just holds it on a small clip behind there And it comes and pops right off the clip. I'll remove this. The new ones will be uh, kind of similar to that also. So now I have the medicine cabinet out and the vanity out and loose. I'm going to get this stuff removed and I'm going to come back and take the rest of the couple towel bars down and stuff. I'll patch and fix up any of the drywall and paint and then... Um, Next, I'll show you how to remove all of the plumbing beauty rings and stuff. We're not going to change the actual lines. We're just going to change the shower head, the handle, and the spigot. Okay, so during the tearing stuff apart, I figured out that my new towel bar won't work with the same holes. And I'm going to be installing a double towel bar. So um, it's going to be holding two towels which is a lot of weight so I cut a hole in the drywall and I'm going to add a block of wood in there um, I'm taking this opportunity to show it's another easy way to see how we can uh, patch a hole in drywall so take a block of wood I made it just slightly bigger than the hole I have uh, already pre-drilled right here in the wood so that I can go right into the king stud here the king stud holds the trimmer stud which holds the header which you can just on all the back. so if you did not have any wood there you could also just hold the block in the wall and just go through the drywall. Just go through the drywall like this to hold a board in place. So this board's gonna work to screw my new towel bar in and also to patch the hole in the drywall. I'm just gonna put the same uh, piece right back in the wall. I didn't realize the old plastic mollies were in it still. So let's put this piece right back up there and add a couple screws in it.
I'm going to use mesh tape on this patch. I've already pre-mixed up some uh, drywall mud joint compound. I'm just going to go through and kind of pre-fill all the holes in the cracks. Always seems to work a little better. I'm going to put add mesh tape over the seams that cracks in the drywall where we just added the piece back in for the block of wood. I'm just using my six inch taping knife to cut this mesh tape. So after it's all screwed in, mesh tape around it, you can just add some joint compound after on top of it. We'll have to do this two or three times to get it really nice and smooth and hide the blocking the patch and then we'll sand it and texture it after this dries I'm gonna go ahead and hit this right there okay so after I removed the vanity I was checking that all the plumbing would work for the new vanity and I figured out that there was a shutoff valve was right here for the old vanity and sink. My new vanity has a drawer inside of it that was going to be exactly where this cold water shutoff is. So I had to move the water line over to here so that it will work in the new vanity. I used this type of pipe, it's called PEX. Um, these things are really nice. They have all kinds of different fittings. This is a ring and this is an elbow. I just show you how I did this right here. Can't really see it in the wall. You take the ring, you put it on and you can take any of the up fittings. They have couplings, nineties, whatever. You push it all the way in and it goes in until this little um, stopper stops it and you slide the ring up. You take these big wrench crimper thing here and you put it right on the ring and you squeeze it and that's how you put fittings on packs so it just squeezes this ring on there so tight that it makes it waterproof that's what I have in there this piece is called a shark bite it's just a push push fitting so it went on the copper line and then I was able to come out of it with packs you can use these type of fittings in all different types of a half inch plumbing. This is the new valve. I went ahead and replaced this one here also and I'm going to replace the one for the toilet since I have all the water off. This is a push connect fitting. All you do is push it right on to the fitting and that's it. There's no bolt to tighten, no soldering or anything. One thing I always do is I mark it like one inch in because that's about how far you can go and you need to go in so I give it a little mark there so I can see that I get it in far enough to where it needs to be. I'm also going to put this little ring on there first and then slide this in. And I can see I've made it to my mark so I am good. This one's not on yet. I'm going to add, this was sitting there. Add the beauty ring to it. And I'll get that on there. Um, I have the drywall here that I'm going to have to patch and put in. Um, I'm going to screw this in. I've added some boards to screw it in. This pipe, I was able to bend it right around the drain line. So I'm going to put this on the wall and I'm going to put some mesh tape on it and uh, I'm also going to hit the other patch that we talked about earlier um, for the towel bar. So right now I'm just going to fix drywall for a little while and we'll get back to you soon. So right now I'm waiting on my drywall patches to dry where I had to move the plumbing and put the block in for the towel bar. So. So I can keep moving forward. I'm going to change all the soft shower accessories right now and show you how to do it. I have all the pieces already sitting out and stuff. I'm also just going to do a quick 
show you how to recaulk a tub and I've already went through and uh, scraped all the old caulking out. You know, just after a while, it gets a little black in behind it. I use some different types of scrapers and razor blades and really spent a lot of time getting it out of the cracks. Grout won't stay on the inside corner. So, for instance, where the tile meets the tub or the actual inside corners, you always need to caulk. So I've already spent a lot of time removing all the caulk. Since I've had a couple of technical difficulties out there, I'm not able to paint yet until I get the drywall done. So I'm just still moving forward. <clears throat> After everything's cleaned out real good with the caulk, I usually take paint thinner and wipe it down all the way around too because uh, the caulk I'm using is oil-based caulk. So that makes it okay. You wouldn't want to wipe anything with paint thinner if you were using a water-based caulk. So you just go, I like to start right up top on something like this. This particular caulk, you don't even touch or wipe it. All you do, you just go right down the corner. If it came out, not right, right there, I just moved back a little bit. You need to get a rag, sometimes you gotta wipe it off. It's coming out the edges a little bit. So I'll go through caulk around all the bottoms and down each corner and so on and so forth in a minute. This particular caulk, you don't even need to wipe it with your finger or anything. I'm just gonna go back and touch up a spot I see here. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to do the rest of it here in a little bit. You know, I'm doing hours and hours of work in here. So I'm just trying to show you guys some short videos here and there of the different steps that I'm doing. I have some caulk on my hand. So I need to get it off with some paint thinner real quick. So now I'm going to show you to replace all of the shower hardware. Most of the time, the spigot where the water comes out, these are usually just threaded on. So I've already broke it loose. You just untwist it and take these off. Um, when you do a new one, you're supposed to put some uh, pipe tape around it or they've got different types of material. This stuff I'm using here is uh, just like a liquid kind of like caulk you can put around the threads. So add some uh, caulk around and then some uh, pipe dope they call it around there. You can use pipe tape, all kinds of different stuff. I, use, I prefer that the best. I already loosened the screw up on that. I'm trying to get this lined up just right. this here I'll tighten it up and adjust it a little bit later so this handle I've already uh, got off there's it was a screw right straight in the end I've already removed it to take the handle off take the handle off and then there's going to be this plate here that you have to get off which is usually held by two screws and take it off so I'm just replacing all the hardware on stuff. I'm not actually going to get inside and uh, replace the valve that's in there. I was able to find a kit that will fit all of my stuff. I'm changing it to the brush nickel. So next, we put this ring. There's a rubber gasket that goes in behind it to stop water from getting in behind there. Put that on, then it has this piece. You just insert it, have a couple of screws. This stuff's all very simple, just to change the hardware parts of your shower and stuff. Now 
Uh, but this is all connected together with the part that's lower this, so I'll have to figure out where I want everything to get it just right. So the next part to put the handle on, you have to do this little piece. This here stops uh, the shower valve from spinning too much. It's got a little stopper on the top there. And it also has a screw that goes right into the end of it to hold that. from tightening this up. So, to get the handle on, it has a very small Allen wrench screw, and it, this kit actually came with the small Allen wrench. So the handle itself will go on, cover that. You take, it's just like the towel bars I showed you guys in a previous video. You just get this little screw to go in underneath and tighten it up. That screw that I'm putting in actually has uh, some Loctite on it, which is a chemical they kind of put on the threads to make sure it doesn't come unscrewed. It's kind of a long screw, but so now it's in. So, the new faucet, the new handle, it has the stop on it, so it'll stop. Now, up top, if we were only wanted to change the sprayer itself, you can, but I'm changing everything because I'm going with nickel now instead of chrome. So I've already broke this loose. So it this unscrews like so on and so forth just some threads inside of there. Now this has some pipe dope on it or uh, tape off. So I am going to add some to this one. So this is to help make sure no water is leaking inside your wall. And I've already got the beauty ring on this that will hide the connection where it makes in the wall here. Now, I'm gonna leave that out because I'm gonna paint the wall still. Got a little of that stuff on the tile. <clears throat> so, I usually stick a screwdriver in the end of this. You can maybe grab it with channel locks or something with a rag on it to try and make it so that it doesn't uh, ding the thing up. But you can get it pretty tight with the screwdriver inside of it. So make sure it's nice and in line. And then the last step is just simply screw this on. This has a rubber gasket inside of it, uh, kind of like your garden hose when you hook it up outside to the hose bib. So this particular part doesn't need any tape or pipe dope on the threads. So that's that. And then once I'm done painting, I'll just slide that right up to finish it. So that's all new shower accessories hooked up. Um, caulking, I'm gonna go through and caulk the rest of it while I'm waiting for my mud to dry. The next step I'm gonna do is sand the drywall spray uh, spray some texture on it and then I'll be ready to paint and put the vanity and stuff back up probably tomorrow okay so I'm going to spray texture on the drywall patch that we did already now this is where I had to put the blocking in for the towel bar I have a couple other patches here and there that I need to do also but I want to give you a close-up so you can see the texture on the wall here this is what we call an orange peel. It's just a light spray. You use this hopper here, spray gun, texture spray, spray gun. This one's kind of small, but it's excellent for little patches like this. Um, I, wanna, I already sanded mostly 
but um, I just want to show you the very most important thing, which all my sophomores, we got actually, we're able to finish some drywall this year, and they'll, they all know, but we have to really, really get the edge around the outside. That's the most important part to, to make it so you don't see a patch. Um, sometimes if you're just doing a little patch, you can take a wet rag and help get rid of, get it to blend back into the texture a little bit. Like that's just a small patch there. Uh, won't really go around a big patch like that too much, but just, uh, I see a line here. I'm just trying to sand out real quick. So like I said, the most important of any drywall you're doing new or a patch is to get rid of the outside edge. That's what you're going to see the most. So I've got the plastic up. I'm gonna spray this spot and this spot right here and show you guys how it's done with the texture spray gun. You use the same mud that we normally use for taping or uh, topping drywall. You just mix it up a little more watery. Uh, it's a little thicker than paint, but it can't be as thick as it is in the mud because you won't be able to uh, spray it out of the gun. So, peel texture so I'll let this dry I'm gonna hit the other spots that are where the camera view is where I had to patch the drywall to move the shutoff valve and had a couple small holes here and there from the old medicine cabinet and towel bar so I'm gonna hit those spots let this dry paint and then all that's left to do is reinstall the vanity the medicine cabinet, the light, I'm gonna change the plugs and switches, show a short video for that, and I'll have to redo the baseboards on this side after the vanity's in because the uh, this vanity's a different size than the other one, so I had to pull the baseboards all down. So we'll be back soon. All right, hello. So today I'm getting painting finally, all the texture dried from yesterday. Um, one thing I wanna point out, like here is where we did the spraying texture and patched the drywall and put a block in the wall for the towel bar. It looks uh, really nice. What I did is I spot prime this, it's called. So where I put the mud is gonna really suck the paint in. Everywhere else on the walls have been painted before. So this little area here where I sprayed texture and patched the hole, um, it's basically like a primer coat. You just hit that with paint as the first thing I did. Then the second thing, I started cutting all the way around the room. I've also spot primed anywhere else that I patched holes where any old towel bars or anything are. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys a quick little demonstration about how I love to uh, paint with one of these little uh, handy bucket buddies. It's got a little magnet in it that you can hold the brush and you can wipe the edge real good. I like using an angle brush myself. So um, I'm just cutting in around the ceiling. All that's left to do is just this little bit and then I'm gonna roll paint. But I know my sophomores were, we get into painting, we did earlier this year. So I'm just gonna try and show you. So in a corner, I just push just the tip of the brush up right into the corner there and then just come out. And I'm just looking just ahead of my brush. So as I, I always give it a wipe down a little bit lower so I don't get the extra paint up on the ceiling. And I'm just keeping my eyes just in front of the brush there, coming right across the ceiling. Sometimes you get holes from the texture. I'll just go back the other way with my brush 
and it'll fill it in real easily. Um, getting into the corner again on this side, I'm just going to get rid of the XX paint first and then just push just the tip of that brush up in the corner and roll out. And then, you know, you got right in the corner, you just kind of get some paint in there. I usually try and do about three inches around. I'll take the roller and hit everywhere else. So I'm gonna get rid of that excess paint again, and then I'm just looking just in front of the brush there and cutting it right into the ceiling. Anything you can hit with the roller, I always you're gonna to wanna to do that. So I'm just giving it a little bit up by the ceiling here so that you don't have to get the roller that close to the ceiling. My spot prime stuff down here is pretty much dry, so I'll be able to go right over it again. This is the first coat. I'll redo this all in a couple hours again after it dries. Just looking just in front of the brush and just have the tip of the brush up there next to the ceiling and I just painted the ceiling so if I did get just a little spot on there or something it's be okay I can touch it up with the ceiling paint real quick I just gotta bring this around to the corner there and I'll be done with the brush I am standing on one of the step stools we make in uh, the junior cook program. It's inside the bathtub here that one of the students gave me. She didn't want it, so she gave it to me to take home, and it's working out real handy for painting. So I'm just going to bring this around the corner right here. And then I'm going to grab the roller and show you what, how I like to roll for just one minute. And that's just a little thing. So right off the bat, every time I dunk it, I wipe the excess paint off the brush so it don't get into onto the whatever I'm trying to paint. And I just follow that right up the tile there. Okay, so now with rolling... You always roll as much paint out of the roller as you can. And then I like to do like about two roller lengths thick and about half the wall at a time to make sure I get enough paint on the wall. Always run it off. I also roll up when I got the most paint on the wall so it splatters up the wall. It don't splatter down onto your baseboard. Just little tricks like that help. <laughs> a lot of times people want to spread the paint too far when you're using a roller. That's why I usually only do about two rollers thick and just re-dunk it every time. Go along the baseboard there. And then also, you know, when you're doing the little stuff, like above the tile here, you can just turn the roller the opposite way and just go right around like that. So that's just the, the way that I do painting. I'm going to go ahead and finish everything else and all right, so I'm waiting for the paint to dry. I'm gonna uh, install the new faucet on my new sink. Um, this sink is offset, so I'll have a little more counter space once I put it all together with the vanity. This is the part of the drain. On my side, you put it in there, and then you tighten these this nut up right here. It's got a rubber gasket to stop the water. I'm just gonna uh, move on right to the faucet right away. This also has a gasket on the bottom of it. This is the part that lifts the water stopper up and down. So you simply 
put it through the hole here. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb. It has two plastic nuts that go on the bottom of these. This is, these are the actual water where the water goes into your faucet. So I'm just gonna snug them up real quick. Both of them. I'm having trouble, so get this one started. All right, so they're both snug. I need to look from this side and make sure everything's the way I want it, nice and centered up, which it is. And then you tighten these up by hand, as tight as you can with your hand. You don't really put wrenches on them too much because they're plastic and it'll break. Um, so that's that. Now, this is the stop, you know, the plunger that stops the water from if you wanted to leave some water in the sink. sink. I have this hole here, so what happens is this little ball goes into the drain and it hooks in there and that's how it lifts up and down. So I'm gonna put this in now and I gotta make sure it's lined up in there just right, which I did it. Then you simply just tighten this thing. The other part that's on the sink that you lift up or down to stop the water just slides right in there. Tighten this up a little bit better here. And then I'm gonna look at this and make sure it's where I want it on my side. So that's down and up. So this is a little screw here. You can just tighten right onto that rod. So now when I lift the little handle up on this side, the sink closes the whole water, you push it down, it releases the water. I'm also gonna take two, a second just to put these two water lines on. It's a lot easier to get all this stuff on before you set the sink, otherwise you'll be laying on your back inside the bathroom vanity doing this. So after I set all this stuff in here on top of the new vanity when I'm done painting, I'm gonna show you guys later. Tighten these up. Just gonna give them a couple more turns with the wrench. They have a rubber gasket inside of those, so you don't need to put pipe uh, thread or pipe dope on the threads on this situation like we had to with the bathtub and uh, where the shower valve went in to the wall or the spigot where the water come out. So this is ready to go into the vanity. One more thing I want to show you real quick is I'm going to change the toilet handle. It's going to match my sink handles and the other stuff I'm doing in here. So when you flush the toilet, it lifts this up, which pulls a chain that lets the water into the toilet. These are really simple to put on. It just has a plastic bolt. You put it through the hole. It's got a square uh, recess that will fit right in there so the whole thing doesn't spin. These threads are actually backwards on the toilet handle. So you have to spin it like you're loosening it to tighten it and so on and so forth. That's because when the handle gets flush, it kind of self tightens itself. Saw blades and stuff do that too, like I showed you in the shop. So then this, we're just gonna put this on, screw this little nut on the back of that. Then there's a chain inside of here it hooks to this, put it on, and we should be good to go. It is. Put the lid back on. I have the water off right this second still because I was going to mess with it. The toilet will work. This works. So i to show you. So when you lift this up, that goes down and stops the water. That's what I was trying to show you. So you'll see it move here. That's what how the stopper works. It lifts and pulls the stopper to keep water in your sink. And that's it. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do the vanity now. Um, I've already leveled it 
pre-drilled the holes where the studs were. Um, you got to figure that stuff out real quick, which I've already done. So all you got to do is just run some screws in in the pre-drilled holes. This right here, oh, by the way, is the drawer that I had to, uh, the reason I had to move the water shut off in the previous videos. It's real simple. Just a few screws. Shim some stuff around if you need it to. I'm gonna cut, I have a couple shims over here. I'm gonna cut it off real quick. All right. So I'm gonna set the top in here real quick now. You just silicone the top down. So I'm on here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut these. Put a bead all the way around this thing. Just like that. Grab this. We already have all the stuff installed in the sink from the earlier videos. Sit that down on the top. Make sure everything is lined up the way you want it. All we'll have to do is Connect the water lines and the drain line, uh, and this will be done. I'm just going to let this dry on the silicone, and that's it. All we got to do is add the handles, which I'll do one real quick here. They usually come with a couple different size screws, which this one did, so you just have to determine what size screw you're going to need. That one might be too long. Try this one. Yeah, this one's a little shorter. It'll work. So you can just screw it on with your hand and just finish it off with the screwdriver. So I'll go through and add the rest of the handles on. Just let this sit and dry. And that's that. <laughs> see the top here and the offset sink so be nice to give a little more counter space over here all right I'm just gonna show you a quick uh, video on the medicine cabinet I messed up my last video so I'm just gonna show you how I did it real quick so on the top, I just marked the line level. I figured out where I want it up and down. And then I marked a little mark right there that you can see. I'm gonna touch that up with some paint. But that's how I knew where it was gonna go left and right. So I figured out where the studs were, which is here, here, and here. And I got some screws down lower. So I pre-drilled it first. And then I just ran in, uh, put the screws in. These brackets here the hinges they have little adjustments on them so if the doors aren't quite straight you can just adjust them there's little plastic clips here that's what holds the shelves on so you can put the shelves wherever you want and then that's how it is so to make sure everything's adjusted just right you want this line across the top to be just pretty much even same thing on the bottom. So it's really a fairly easy thing to do, but that's the medicine cabinet with the light on it. I can't turn the light on, it just blinds the video. 
Well, that's just a quick one. Sorry, I didn't get to show you guys how it went. I was doing it. All right, I'm almost done with everything here. I'm doing the towel bars. Um, I got the hand one there. I did the toilet paper holder on the side of the cabinet. So I just want to show you guys how we do this. Um, it's you, you get a little template and it tells you where to drill the holes for the little brackets. So, yeah, you know, I had knew where the stud was here and then we put the block in over here. So uh, that's so we knew that this was going to be a double towel bar. So I already know there's wood behind this. Take a small level and level this in. Then you would just take a drill bit and drill the holes, which I've already done to try and speed up the video. So then you screw these two brackets in with the drill and there they are, okay? So now this is like at the very beginning videos I told you about, they just have this little Allen wrench set screw underneath. So you just tighten this up from underneath. I'm trying to avoid scratching the new paint. It's all right if it does, I always, I don't worry about little nicks here and there right until I'm done. You'll go back and touch up all that stuff. It just takes a minute. That's how it is on job sites and stuff too. You just, stuff happens. And you just get it straightened out. So this is a little bit goofy because it's the double bar. So it's kind of hard. I'm going to try and get these things in and lined up just right. So if you didn't know what I was talking about earlier when I was saying double, so we can hang two tiles here, because this is a small bathroom. This bathroom's in a bed in a bedroom. So I'm just tightening this bracket up. go back and touch that up. I'm going to show you one more thing real quick. I'm going to hang this hook here. Um, you know, you can hang a towel or your robe up there or whatever. So this, there is no wood behind it. So we're going to use a uh, little plastic molly. It comes with them. Uh, it, you squeeze it like this and push it through the hole and the drywall on it expands like this. So it locks itself in after you drill the hole. So I've already marked this just to speed up the video. So just gonna drill the hole. Move that around. Some insulation popped out of there. So then you gotta you gotta squeeze it closed to put it into the hole and then it opens up afterwards. That drill bit's just a little small so I'm gonna ring it out a little bit more. it in real nice and hard with your thumb so these will hold a lot of weight that's what's on the hand towel the toilet paper holders down here and this is just like a little towel or road bar it's got this push pin it wants you to push through this brand and it opens them up behind it kind of hard to push but so that Open that up, and you just take the little bracket. It's the same on all of these. These clips do have an up and down on them, and so I have the up arrow I can see in my hand. Get the other one in. Then it's simple. Put it back on. Oh, the Little set screws not loose. Put this back on here. Tighten up the set screw underneath. I'm just gonna get it a little bit. Oops, drop the wrench. Just trying to make it, I gotta go back through and tighten stuff a little more just to Make sure it's all good uh, and tight. I'm not going to waste the whole time on the video doing that. I'll go back and touch them up. So the last thing I'm going to do is hang this towel bar. This is just like a paint pull or anything. You twist it and it locks right here. So you open it, it'll, it'll expand to the different sizes that you need. 
So I'm going to go, I could see that this line on the drywall, or I mean in the tile, goes straight down. So I'm just going to use that as a reference for both sides. So I tighten it up like that, and then you can take this and snuck turn this here on the end, and it'll get this a little more tight if you need it to. And that's that. So that's the tile bars and shower bars. Oh, I, I just put the trim back on too. So I gotta caulk that in, touch up paint. And the last thing what I have to do is just hook up the sink. But you've seen how I silicone the sink uh, faucet, not the top down. So I'm just gonna let that dry. I'll do that tomorrow and that'll get you guys one last finished video then. Okay, my video got messed up when I hung the mirror. There's the light I did. So the mirror is very simple to hang medicine cabinet. I simply put a line across the top that made it level and I put a little dash right there so I knew where to hold it left and right. I figured out where the studs were already. I knew where they were from opening the wall up, but then you simply drill a couple holes. I hit both the studs. I put screws down lower also. These hinges are adjustable. You can just turn these screws right here and it'll adjust in or out or left or right, okay? This clip here is what holds the shelves on. You just put the clips in there wherever you're gonna want your shelf and you lock it down. After you close the cabinet, you should have a nice good reveal all the way around the thing. And if not, then you would do the adjustments on the hinges. So that is the medicine cabinet. All right, one last video for the finished product. There is the new vanity with the offset sink, the medicine cabinet, our new light. We have the plugs and switches that we did, towel bar, toilet paper roll holder and the handle. Everything looks the same. Robe hook, shower head. We put the new handle on, re all the tub in. Over here is our double towel bar that we put the blocking in the wall. You can see that the texture looks really nice and the same. And this is the final product.